I had a really lovely conversation on Tuesday with a man who's not affiliated with this church at all. In fact, I don't believe he's affiliated with any church. And he stopped me and he asked me if we were still operating these emergency shelters. And so, of course, I replied, yes, we are. And then he pulled out a blank check and wrote me a check for $200 on the spot. And I assured him that 100% would go to supporting our outreach to the residents of these shelters. It got me thinking. I, I think, I believe, that most people actually want the church to be like Jesus. They want the church to put its money where its mouth is. They want us to walk the talk. Today, our first reading is from the prophet Habakkuk. He lived at about the same time as the prophet Jeremiah when Israel was in a state of decline and the Babylonian Empire was breathing down their neck. They were getting closer. Israel was falling apart, faith was in decline, and according to Habakkuk, it was because they were not living out their faith. They had turned from the teachings of their faith, from the law and the prophets. And in our first reading today, Habakkuk wrote these words. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. Our vision and how we live it out should be obvious to people who live in this community. It should be obvious to people even as they're running by what's going on there. So my question to you is, what is our vision? Well, I've mentioned this before. I in happily inherited the vision that was planned before I arrived. And in summary, it is to be a beacon of hope and love. So let's break this out just very, very briefly. What is a beacon? A beacon radiates light outward to help people find their way to safe shelter, to a safe harbor. A place where in the midst of a storm people can go to weather the storm. And aren't there indeed many storms in life? Hope and love are, of course, grounded in the promises of Jesus Christ, who radiates heaven's light into this broken world. So this is our purpose, this is our mission, this is our vision to spread the love of God, to be messengers of this light that brings hope. Last fall, as you may recall, if you don't, I'll briefly remind you in summary here, I spoke about the building blocks of how we are going to move forward to achieving this vision. And it involved hiring three staff members. The first person was a coordinator of evangelization. We've since hired Ronnie Lunn. The second is a coordinator of community care. We've hired Bradley Van Dam to fill that position. And the third is a coordinator of children and family ministries. We've hired Maria Pereira into that position. Ronnie's main focus is evangelization, and his main instrument for doing this is the Sycamore program. His second most important priority is supporting Maria in her work because we have the beautiful gift of having Maria here on staff with us who was raised in this community, went to schools, recently married, she's pregnant with her first child. Her cohort is about to go through these same life transitions of marrying and having families. So we have this beautiful gift of having Ronnie as our coordinator of evangelization, Maria as our coordinator of children and family ministries, and Brad, who's coordinating our outreach effort. Our focus, and Brad's focus, 75% of his focus is reaching out. He's liaising with other organizations that help the poor so we can understand the need in our community so that we can reach out where real need is. Brad also is helping us support how we care for one another. And one, one task of interest that I've asked him to do, in fact, that's not true. It was out of his own initiative that he came up with this idea. Our cemeteries are full. And so Brad is now investigating, and I hope that we can launch something in the spring 
um, enhancing the cemetery down in Herring Cove, St. Paul's Cemetery, with uh, perhaps a crematorium, uh, not a crematorium, sorry, a columbarium, um, so that we can offer that to, to people because our cemeteries are full. So that's just a little bit in summary of how we are going about achieving our vision by hiring an evangelist, someone who can help us understand the needs of the world and help us respond, and someone who can help us with children and family ministries. And of course, along with that, we have Susan Han, Paula Cormier, and Ainsley Cardinal, who help keep this parish administratively operating. And so this is our team to help us achieve this vision. It is a vision, I believe, that is within our grasp. I believe this with all of my heart. And like in Habakkuk's time, God is forcing us to get back to the basics of our faith. Listen, you don't have to be a rocket science to figure out that in a, in a, in a geography that uh, 45 years ago had seven Catholic church in it, churches in it, and now we're down to one, there's a problem. But God is sovereign, we're not, so let's get back to the basics. God is bringing his church to its knees so that we can get back to the basics of our faith. So praise God for this opportunity of grace, of getting back to the basics of our vision. So I have an ask for you. I, I ask that you increase your financial giving to our parish to help us achieve this vision, this vision that I believe with all of my heart is within our grasp, to help us become this beacon of light to a world in need of light, salt, to a world in need of salt. I've often told you in my homilies that when I preach, I'm preaching to myself. I'm just not standing up here talking about idle words. This stuff occupies an intimate place in my own being, and I just want you to know that obviously I collect the salary from the church. I give 23% of my salary back to this parish so that I can help us achieve this vision. Now, I don't expect you to give 23% of your income, but I do want you to consider increasing your income. As we decrease our overhead in buildings, I want to increase our capacity to support our vision of becoming a beacon of hope and love. The church, our parish, the church is not out to make money. We are out to use money to achieve our vision. We're out to do what Jesus commanded us to do. And giving is a spiritual practice that Jesus spoke about. In fact, sacrificial giving is a spiritual practice. I personally find that the best way to give, perhaps because I struggle with being organized on all the little details of things, I like having things organized. So I, in particular, have opted for pre-authorized giving. So I know exactly what's gonna come out of my bank account on the 15th of every month. I budget that way. So you can also, if you're interested in pre-authorized giving, there are forms at the back that you can fill out uh, later on today as you're leaving or any time, just contact the office. You can also give by e-transfer, regular envelopes, Canada Helps Online, or cash donations, of course. But of course, if you just throw cash in, into the basket, which is all well and good, um, we can't provide you a tax receipt. I want us to write a vision which we have just written. It's on our website. It is what we proclaim. It is what our, our governance structure of the church said. We have a vision. Write it. Make it plain on tablets so whether people are running by or driving by or walking by, they know this is a place that puts money where its, where its mouth is. So you have been given forms on the way in. I've been informed. Please pray about how you can financially support the vision of our parish. Thank you for listening and God bless you.